Edie and David Boyle. It's another Monday. The weekend's over. Forget about it. You're back with your owners now, your masters. We're all slaves to the minimum wage, like the song. I'm a slave to the minimum wage. Which is pretty much every single job I've ever had is minimum wage. Absolute bare fucking minimum. I've had some fucking shit jobs. I've done all sorts of shit. I did door-to-door sales, debt collecting, Burger King, construction, barista, bartender, phone sale. I've done every piece of shit, low-life job you can think of, I've done. I'd say the worst job I ever had was at a bank. At one of the big four banks in Australia, just as a cashier, I was 20. And it seems like working at a bank is better than being a garbage man. But when you're 20, that place is a soul-crushing fucking nightmare. I was just a cashier. I was a teller. And I lasted one year. I swore I would do a year. And somehow I fucking lasted. I don't know how the fuck I got through the interview process either. Even at 20, I still had a suspiciously... I still had a little bit of a criminal background that they obviously didn't fucking look into. So I got past that part. But even in the interview, I I fucked up the interview as well. I remember the interview was all going okay at best. And then the lady was like, this is no bullshit. This is when I I was 20, by the way. You would think you'd be a little bit smarter, but... So the interview was going pretty okay at best. And then... The lady asked me this question. She's like, so, so David, do you dot your I's and cross your T's? And I had no fucking idea what the hell she was talking about. I thought she literally meant, do I dot my eyes, <laughs> do I dot my I's and cross my T's when I'm writing? And I fucking swear to God, I said this to her. I'm like, sometimes... <laughs> What a fucking moron. And like sometimes I don't dot my I's. But I always cross my T's because (laughs) because otherwise they just look like L's. So (laughs) you have to cross your fucking T's. And she just burst out into laughter. I'm like, what are you fucking talking about? She's like, no, are you thorough? Do you pay attention to detail? Yeah, I do. I pay a lot of attention to detail. I pay a lot of attention to sayings as well. And from the second I walked into that shithole, I fucking hated every single fucking second of it. It was a fucking nightmare. Because I was going in hungover every single day. I reckon I went in hungover. Let's say I worked 250 days. I reckon I went in hungover at least 200 and drunk, like actually drunk 40 of them. The worst part about that job was... There was nowhere to hide, so you had to stand there all day and look busy. But every single customer, they wanted you to upsell them. They wanted you to refer them to like the financial advisor or to the loans manager. It was just fucked. And so every month I'd get dragged in. They're like, you've had zero referrals for six months in a row. I'm like, I'm really working on my referral game at the moment. I'm really putting in some effort. And then... For about a month, my manager was like standing over my shoulder, making sure I asked every single fucking customer. There was two good things about it. One was I had access to all my friends or anyone I knew. I had access to their bank accounts, if they had an account with that bank, obviously. So I would spend most of the day looking up friends and acquaintances, bank accounts, and seeing what kind of debt they're in, how much savings they got, all that sort of shit. I looked up every single person I fucking knew. I looked into their shit. So that was fun. There was a few dark secrets. And the only other good thing about that job was I figured out a way to steal money. Once I figured that out, things became slightly easier. I'll tell you how I did it. Technically, it wasn't exactly from the bank. It was from customers. So this is how it would go down. So we would get big deposits all the time. There was a lot of bars and different sorts of businesses. 
big cash businesses around the area that used to make large deposits in our bank. A lot of the time on these large deposits, the customers wouldn't have counted their money correctly. It actually happened a lot more than you would think. So for example, if a customer came in to make a $10,000 deposit and I counted their money and there was $12,000, which happened regularly, I would then recount it five more times to make sure it is 12,000 and I haven't fucked up myself. And then once I was certain that there was 12,000 instead of 10,000, this is what I would do. I would then say to the customer, excuse me, sir, I have just counted your money. I counted it three times. You have actually given me $11,000 instead of $10,000. And the customer's like, really? I'm like, yeah, it's $11,000. I counted it three times. They're like, oh, that's great. Yeah, just change it to 11000 That's awesome. And they would praise me as well. That fucking honest man. He looks dodgy. His eyes are bloodshot. But what an honest fellow. So that part was covered. The customer won't notice. The customer thinks I've actually done a good thing. Then I put the leftover $1,000 straight into my till. And now I have a surplus of $1,000. And then the hard part starts is trying to get the $1,000 out of the till into your pocket with about 400 cameras on you. And there was one spot in my little area that if you went to the back wall where the note counting machine was, if you stood hard up against the wall and counted your notes, that left-hand side of your body wouldn't be seen by the cameras. Well, in theory, possibly still could have been seen by the cameras, but... I also decided that they wouldn't even look at the cameras unless they see something's missing, which they won't because no one knows there's a surplus thousand dollars there. So at the end of the day, when I'm counting off my till, go to the note counting machine, put the thousand dollars down the front of my pants, and that's it. As smooth as silk. A victimless crime once again. That was the only good thing about working at that fucking bank for a year. And it was a nice little bonus, I have to admit. A little bit of money came my way. So that's it. Maybe I'll make this a new Monday thing. I'll tell you about the shit jobs I've had and how I've stolen money from those particular companies. Because if there's one bit of wisdom I want to pass on to the listeners, there is always a way to rot the system. There is always cracks. Nothing's airtight. That's what I want to leave you with. But I think I'll do that. I think I'll start Mondays off with a fucking horror story from one of my jobs. Anyway, that's it. I'm done for tonight. I'll fucking see you later.